Hey everyone, it's Brandon from Songwish. We're here introducing Remedy 2. It's a free upgrade for Remedy 1 users. It's got a ton of new features, so let's get into it. Alright, as you can see, Remedy 2 looks a lot different from Remedy 1. We introduced a fresh new interface, and there's a different workflow. Let me show you what I mean. Remedy 2 still has the same MIDI sampling engine as Remedy 1. Now it's more like a modern hardware sampler, in that it uses pads. You can load MIDI into any of the available pads, and it will slice up the file automatically, much like Remedy 1 will. The main difference in Remedy 2 is that you can audition slices in pad edit mode, and once you've found one you like, you can assign the slice to the pad by clicking the assignment button located on the pad. In this way you can easily load multiple MIDI files by using several pads. Use one pad and Remedy 2 essentially reduces to Remedy 1. Now this brings us to the global mode as opposed to the pad edit mode we just covered. Pad edit mode automatically assigns the slices to a MIDI controller. It allows you to quickly explore the MIDI file. Now with global mode, you can make use of all your favorite slices locked into each of the pads and bind each pad to a custom MIDI controller node. Here I'm assigning two pads to the same MIDI controller node. This creates a pad group. So if I press the assigned MIDI controller note for the group, both pads play back blended together. This pad group feature can work well for both melodic MIDI and drum MIDI scenarios. Enter global mode by exiting any edited pad. You can do this by clicking the wrench. Click on the binding tab in the global properties. Here we can make a controller binding for my Alesis Q61 MIDI controller. The C-2 selection means I'm binding the pad to the bottom of my controller. But you can make custom bindings for any MIDI controller you may have. Let's save this preset. Now let's look at loading MIDI files. With Remedy 2, there are now multiple ways to load MIDI files. First, let's look at loading with the built-in browser. When you drop down, the browser displays all your drives in a list. This includes any external drives you have. This was a highly requested feature, because now you don't have to move or copy your user MIDI anywhere. Just browse to the user location and click the star. The next time you drop down, the browser will show the recent selection as a favorite. It also shows recently navigated folders, which you can also choose to favorite by clicking the star. The other way to load MIDI is by dragging and dropping a browser item onto a pad. You can rapid fire drag and drop files onto each pad. This works perfect with MIDI loops or MIDI chord packs. And if ever you need quick access to your MIDI files to reorganize or rename, you can right click the item in the browser list and click show in OS. From here, you can also click and drag a file onto any pad. Also, if you've navigated away from the loaded MIDI file, you can navigate back by clicking the file name box. A second click will select the file in the list. Now let's look at exporting MIDI. You can drag out the source MIDI, drag out a pad slice MIDI, or in the global export tab, drag out combined or separate slices. You can easily arrange a song or even make an entire loop pack with these great MIDI drag out features. Next, let's look at the pad grid. When you right click a pad, you can copy, paste, rename, swap, and delete. An exciting new feature in Remedy 2 is MIDI input and output recording. To record input MIDI, Right-click a pad to arm it for recording. Choose input from the list. Then ensure the playhead is running. 
while playing back MIDI from either your controller or from your DAW's sequencer. The input recording feature allows you to record in ideas you may already have in mind. Let's adjust the beats to get a perfect loop, and we'll disarm recording. The other recording feature is MIDI output recording. MIDI output recording captures the MIDI coming out of Remedy, so you can remix compositions. To record output MIDI, right click a pad. Under record, choose output. So here we can record the beginnings of these two slices into the target pad. Now we're going to play it. And voila, a new melody. The left and right navigation buttons give you access to a total of 120 pads. There is the hide MIDI view button to access more pads as well. Now let's bring back the MIDI view. You can see we added bar numbers. And at the bottom, it displays the original key and time signature information of the MIDI file. Moving down, we see the pad properties. In the Slice tab, we have the parameters that affect the MIDI slices. Bank number to access additional 128 slices based on the next parameter, slice size. Shift. Shift is a great way to get situated on the first downbeat of a measure, but there's plenty of room for happy accidents otherwise. Tempo X, short for tempo multiplier, slows the playback speed of the slice by a factor. Loop X repeats the loop by X number of times, but only in global mode. And finally transpose. You can transpose by semitone or octave. You can also click and type a value into the boxes. The last button in the slice panel is for the freeze playback mode. When enabled, freeze takes a vertical cross section of whatever MIDI notes are at the start of the slice and stretches these notes to take up the entire slice. In edit mode, the chord playback is everlasting. And now to see how the freeze playback mode applies in global mode. Here's the default loop X with a value of 1. In this case, the pad slice in global mode is precisely the slice size, 4 beats. Let's double the loop X and put it at 2, back in edit mode. So now the resulting pad slice in global mode is doubled, 8 beats or four bars in 2-2 two -two time. Finally, freeze mode can also work in global mode. It applies in a similar way, this time to all the pad slices, making chords across pads. Now for the finale, let's see Remedy 2 on three simultaneously sounding tracks in Logic Pro. Specifically, we have a Remedy on a track with keys, and we also have Remedies on a bass and drum track. Because we set up MIDI binding for each Remedy 2 instance, we can achieve a structured performance across all tracks with a single MIDI controller press. There are also two different ways to trigger MIDI slices. The default playback mode, 
by triggering one MIDI controller note at a time. Or the loop sustain playback mode by holding down a dummy note on your MIDI controller while at the same time triggering other slices. The result is seamless playback between slices. And that does it for the overview. We hope you enjoy Remedy 2.